I uh, really appreciate all of you taking time to come and join us today uh, for the first ever, to our knowledge, High School Entrepreneurship Competition in uh, I'm just going to quickly give you guys a little bit of background on what's happening today. Uh, I'll introduce the judges and then we'll, we'll be off. Um, my name is Austin Yoder, by the way. Uh, and in, in conjunction with David and the Entrepreneurship Students, this semester, we've been learning about entrepreneurship, what does it mean to be an entrepreneur, how to build a business. Um, so the students have been learning the Business Model Canvas for the entire semester so far. This is a tool that was developed by most of the top MBA professors and consultants uh, taught in MBA programs all around the world. Um, it's a great visual way to help people understand how to create a business model. So as they learn this, They've been developing their own business ideas over the course of the semester. So they've been working in six teams with four. They come up with their own business idea, and we'll be see, seeing them present those business ideas today. Uh, over the course of the semester, they have been doing presentations multiple times. They've been presenting on topics related to entrepreneurship that they're passionate about. Uh, for the business challenge, they've been doing presentations. They've been presenting in order to prepare for today uh, for their business pitch. Uh, so in addition to developing their own business ideas, they also have actually created a micro-business through, through the business challenge. Uh, essentially what happened is we gave every team 6,000 ID, and the assignment was to bring back more than that. Didn't matter how they do it, as long as it was legal and ethical. Right? So they couldn't, couldn't break any law. It had, had to be ethical too. Uh, the winning team, Team Teal, uh, with 6,000 PIB in three weeks, generated 60,000 PIB. Ten, over 10 times. Uh, the losing team, and we definitely won't mention the Roasted Chestnuts team name, <laughs> lost half of their capital. So a, a big range. Uh, but you can see they actually get experience hands-on creating a business. They're using real money to go out and bring back more. Right. Over the course of the semester, they've been uh, hearing from, learning from, being inspired by guest speakers, including uh, the former president of San Rio in China, current CEO of Newslands, which is the, the biggest independent news site in Taiwan right now, uh, Kendall, who, who many of you may remember, just a quick show of hands, who saw Kendall and Kayeen present here? Yeah, lots of people, awesome. Uh, so Ken Kendall, for anybody that didn't know, uh, Kendall was the first person in history to play a classical music concert in Antarctica. He actually flew the piano in from southern Chile using Kickstarter to raise money. Very cool. Um, coming up, we have, uh, we have semester two of the program, which I'm just going to quickly tell you about. Uh, so the students that are doing entrepreneurship right now will be going to social entrepreneurship as well. Social entrepreneurship is for-profit business that does some good in the world. So they're creating some kind of social good or impact. Uh, over the course of the social entrepreneurship program, they'll actually be working with social businesses all around the world. So each team will be reaching out to a social business. It could be in any country or industry that they're personally interested in or passionate about, working with the senior managers and decision makers in that organization to develop their own consulting internship. So whatever business challenges or problems that organization is currently facing, these students will be working with the top decision makers in the organization how to analyze those problems, and at the end of the semester, after having worked with them very closely, they'll present a set of suggestions to help resolve those problems to the uh, executives and board of directors within that organization. Um, so they'll be getting real, real world experience using what they actually have learned this semester in entrepreneurship to help in a consulting fashion uh, solve business problems for a real business. Very cool. Simultaneously, uh, they'll be using what they've learned this semester in entrepreneurship to go out and work with disadvantaged populations. Uh, so for example, in January, we'll be heading out with a, a group of students to work with some, some of the orphans and disadvantaged children from the Mustard Seed Children's Home in Xinjiang. Uh, 
an intensive weekend entrepreneurship workshop to help those students and children also learn about entrepreneurship. Uh, at the end of that semester, the students right now are the only high school students in the world that are invited to Washington, D.C. to participate in the largest student conference on social entrepreneurship in the nation. It's usually reserved exclusively for the top entrepreneur and social entrepreneur students from the best universities, including UPenn, uh, Stanford, Duke, Georgetown. Uh, it's exclusively reserved for college students, and especially for the seniors, uh, we've reached out through our network to get invitations. So again, they're the only high school students in the world that have an invitation to attend this conference which is very exciting. And this summer, we've also been working with one of the largest charities in Australia to open up a service learning opportunity for them. Uh, we'll be going over with a group of students to Australia, and they will be leading with us workshops teaching entrepreneurship to the aboriginals there, and also to the migrant refugees, so people coming from different disadvantaged backgrounds. And they'll be using what they've learned this semester, and also as they're learning in social entrepreneurship, uh, those skills to help help people from different backgrounds. Um, for any students that are out there right now that are maybe interested in getting involved in these kinds of activities, uh, in addition to social entrepreneurship next semester, we'll be opening up another section of entrepreneurship as well, starting in January. So if you are interested in participating in something like what you see today, or in these kinds of opportunities coming up, uh, talk to Pam, let her know that you're interested, or you can talk to David or myself, uh, and we can get you an interest form sort of ahead of the crowd. Uh, just wanted to wrap this up and quickly thank our sponsors today. Uh, so the, the cash prize for the winning team today is 45,000 Taibi. Uh, the second place team will win 15,000 Taibi. Uh, we have to thank Rubicon Venture Capital, which is based in San Francisco and New York. Uh, for contributing towards the cash prizes. Uh, the rest of the cash prizes have been generated actually by the students themselves through the business challenge activity. Uh, and we also have to give a, a giant thanks to Uber. Uh, we're really privileged to have Lee Kai with us here today. Uh, Uber will be giving credit of uh, 1,500 Taipei to each student on the winning team so that when they're traveling around to Taipei going to movies with their friends, they can be riding around in an S class, right, in style. Uh, and for, the, for each member of the second place team, they'll be getting credit of 750 TID. Um, so for the, for the winning teams, we'll get to, to really travel in style. Uh, a quick introduction to our judges. Uh, we're really, really fortunate to have everybody here with us today. Uh, Derek Fruger is uh, a friend of ours. He's an experienced serial entrepreneur. Uh, his software is where he got his start coming out of Silicon Valley. He is a global investor and mentor to a number of startups around the world, uh, a very experienced entrepreneur. Uh, Ms. Juliana Hope is the Senior Vice President of the Principal Investment Division at CTBC Bank. Um, we are very fortunate to be able to have her perspective. Uh, Mr. John Brebeck is a, a Georgetown alum, like myself. Uh, he has 20, over 20 years of experience in the finance industry. Uh, he is an early stage investor in startups and invests in companies all around Asia. And Mr. Li Kai Gu is the GM of Uber in Taiwan, uh, an experienced serial entrepreneur himself and an alum of TAS for all of, uh, all of the students here. Um, so we're really fortunate to be able to have all of these judges here with us today. As the students pitch, they'll be uh, getting the perspective and feedback from really, as you can see, a number of different backgrounds and industries uh, on what they can do to improve their business model. So I'm going to shut myself off here, and without further ado, uh, welcome up the first team. Later, when you find out you are running out of money and when you really need that money back, 
you went to the head up and you asked her, hey, I mean, can I have my money back? And then Amanda not only refused to pay you back the money, and also insists that he did not take a penny from you for the past few weeks. Well, that's awkward enough. So, the, so we have two problems here. The first problem is that you could be tough on Amanda and ask her to give you back the money right now. But then this will not only destroy your friendship, but also make the conversation even more awkward. Well, the second problem is that you could insist that Amanda did send a 960 NT to you. Which is a fact, but you don't have any concrete evidence to back, your, back up your argument. So, what next? So, therefore, we have the great and powerful land dragon. So, you can land with your friends, and this app will keep you on, keep track of your, the flow of your money, remind your friends to return your money, and then to prevent the unneeded conflict and argument. And now, I gotta hand it back to Kara, who is going to talk about the data we collected from our marketing research. Thank you, Howard. So um, to back up what Howard just mentioned in his story, we've done some market research uh, with over 100 students from all over Taiwan from different high schools and different backgrounds. So first of all, we asked them the question of whether or not they lend money and borrow money from, to and from their friends. Now this is to see whether or not uh, lending money and borrow money is an in Indian activity that's uh, being engaged by students all, uh, all over Taiwan. And the majority of people say that they do engage in these type of monetary transactions between their friends. And next we ask them whether or not they have problems getting their money back, which is a problem that we are trying to solve with our application. And again, the majority of them agree that they do have problems getting their money back for two main reasons. First, it's really awkward to ask your friends to, your, to return your money. And second of all, uh, people forget that they lend money or forget to bring money. So we also ask them how they currently keep track of money loans. And as we suspected, people keep track of their money loans through um, their memory. And so this brings to our conclusion, uh, people trust their memory too much in keeping track of their money loans. And our application is here to solve you, uh, to solve that problem and uh, relieve you of that stress. So now I'm going to hand over to Hanty to talk about our user interface and how our app solves your problems. So how does Land Dragon solve this, these problems for you? I'm going to show you. I'm going to go through the interface with you guys and tell you exactly how Land Dragon can improve the peer-to-peer -peer transactions between friends. So as you can see on the content page, you can see all the friends you have had uh, money transactions with, and um, uh, the the interface is very similar to messaging applications uh, with the similar functions. Swipe to your right, and then you can see all the uh, transactions you've made recently with all of your friends. And coming back to Amanda, who owes you 960 MP, with Landrega, you would already have all of your transaction records recorded on this application. And if you are very, um, if you're worried that it would be awkward to talk to her in person to get your money back, you can simply buzz her to remind her. She can reject uh, a well-recorded application history and a uh, friendly reminder. If you're worried that um, the application can be manipulated by other people to make it seem as though you are let you, you owe someone else money, do not worry. Our application, every transaction has to be confirmed by both sides. So uh, either through um, password or QR code confirmation. Application also allows um, group event transaction pages. So if you have a group event, you can simply enter all of your costs here and split the spending again. And we also can um, do budget control uh, so, so that it could improve your transaction experience altogether. So our application not only solidify the peer-to-peer tra -peer transactions, it also helps your, you control your money flow and um, make uh, avoid all awkwardness and maintain friend, uh, healthy friend friendships. I'm gonna give it to Eva to talk about targeted customers. Target not only peer to peer but also family to families. We're targeted at younger audiences because, like us, they like to hang out and shop with each other. However, they tend to be forgetful about the little amount of money they lend and borrow from each other. Through this amazing personalized experience in Dragon, we can foster their knowledge of finances through this amazing application. Also, we have the function later enables family to construct dream projects such as fundraising for grandpa's birthday party with our DA event function. We believe Land Dragon can enhance family relationship with its functions. Every single customer, every single user of our application are very important to us. Uh, with every new user, we can increase our 
database and the data is essentially a co-creational system that will enable us to increase our data. We have the FAQ and help centers that are there to help us, our customers. Also, we invented the rating system that would prevent our customers from future losses from lending money to people with low credentials. I'll hand over to Howard to talk about key resources. The key access to this application are quite simple as they are mainly human resources. The human resources we the human resources we acquired is a business manager who helps us develop and develop and execute the business strategy and marketing strategy and a group of programmers who program program and con construct the application and run the system maintenance and fabricate the customer relationship management database. Or we also use that database as an intellectual resources. Now I'm going to hand it to Kara to talk about partnership. Partnerships are very important to our application in regards to the revenue side. As we will talk about later in uh, introducing our revenue streams, there are four main ways of generating revenue, two of which depend on our partnerships. First of all, um, our application is a data collecting application, so we record customer monetary transactions, and this information can be useful to businesses and banks who target the same audiences that uh, we have in our customer database. They can see uh, what how the how teenagers are using their money nowadays, which is very inaccessible to many of the businesses out there who currently can only uh, track such uh, monetary transactions through credit cards for adults and not for teenagers. Second of all, we also have personalized generally, uh, savior generating companies, much like the ones used in Line or Facebook, where um, we, we're trying to build a personal experience where you can send savers as friendly reminders to each other, and you, so you can avoid awkward conversations with your friends face to face. And now I'm going to hand it over to Eva to talk about the cost of our application. The internet is small cost. However, we need the assistance of business managers and programmers to help us to maintain our system. We have been in contact with Taipei American School, and the programming club have offered to help us through the first steps of the setting up of the application. Our variable cost was dedicated on the future improvement of the application. I'll hand over to Nancy. I'm going to talk about the revenue stream. Our application is free. However, you can, you can upgrade your uh, upgrade the application and uh, get around the advertising, which is our second revenue stream. Um, uh, our in-app products are the stickers we sell to our customers to make their experience with our application uh, more friendly and uh, more enjoyable. These three revenue streams may not seem like a lot. However, this is to, for us to expand our database. Our main focus of this application right now is to um, be accessible and inexpensive to our targeted customers, which are mainly high school students. Our, these are all to support our fourth revenue stream, providing information about our customers to interested parties that, that could help them support their marketing research. Okay, we will go over a quick recap of what we talked about, why our application is worth your money and your investment. So um, first of all, um, data, as supported by data conducted through market research from all over Taiwan, there is indeed a problem with people depending on their members too much uh, in regards to uh, recording how much they lend to their friends. Our user interface is very user friendly and smooth and easy to use. We connect peer to peer and family to family, and also we target especially our younger audiences who need the help of them Our customer is really based on a co-creational system that exponentially with our database. We mainly rely on human resources, which is a business manager and a group of programmers. Then you are is low cost. So the question all of you might be wondering now is how many people will actually use this application? From our market research conducted through the same survey, we uh, estimated around 54% of people will try to use this application. Now to give you actual numbers, if you look at the uh, population of Taiwan, which is around 24 million, around 13% of the Taiwanese population are uh, people of the age of 15 to 24, which gives us around 3 million uh, high schoolers and college students. Um, and uh, through our research, around 80% of um, high schoolers and college students use um, college Use, sorry, use mobile app, uh, smartphones. So that gives us around 2 million people left. And with 54% of people who are willing to use this application, we have a solid potential market of around 1.5 million users. Now, we're not only looking towards expanding this application in Taiwan. Our application is easily adaptable and translatable. So we're, we're really looking towards expanding to the global market, where we believe many teenagers outside of Taiwan are in need of this application. Thank you very much. And we thank you for listening to our, uh, to our presentation. And hopefully, you will download our app when it's on the market. Thank you.
So what particular information are you going to have in the database that I as a business are going to pay for? If it's just the exchanges between friends, I don't see a lot of business value is when you exchange to businesses that I have to go to pay for. For example, in our group, uh, create group function where they rec record exactly what they're spending their money on, this type of information would be really useful to businesses for seeing whether or not potential, whether or not ISOs will be potential customers for them. Enter the, the, the bill, and then you enter the name of the email, and then you automatically 